Good morning online family and welcome to our Sunday morning live stream. Thank you for joining us today. We are so happy to have you. If this is your first time tuning into our service, we say a special welcome to you. We are the Jesus Life Center and we are located at 150 County South Bank Road, Kelly Village, County. The vision of our church is to be a Holy Spirit-led church of excellence where God is glorified. People are loved, empowered and transformed and their potential maximized. Also, our mission is to reach, to inspire, to serve, and to empower people so that the life of Christ may be revealed. We are excited to be in God's presence together. So as we begin, feel free to share this service with a family or a friend, and let us know that you are here with a comment. You are welcome to visit us in person next Sunday. It will be a, such a pleasure to meet you in person. Join us as we begin our worship service. I know that you'll be blessed. because what you have done for us I tell you no one else can and no one else will oh God we thank you for your love we thank you for your love from the dawn of time before the
have to be. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming there's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. This new year 2021, we acknowledge the sovereignty of Almighty God. Let us come together in prayer for ourselves, our family, our church, the nation and the world. Our week of prayer at Jesus Life Center begins on Monday 11th January to Sunday 17th from 6.30 to 7.45 each night. On Saturday, it will be at 9 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. On Sunday 17th January, we will have two services at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Choose which service you would like to attend, but let's be there. We need to dream again and discover our own kazoon. May the blessings of God be upon you. Brethren, let's be steadfast. Oh, it's so overwhelming. The love of God. Every time I, I hear that and I reflect on God's love, and I say, wow, I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of the love for me. And in spite of who I am, he gave himself. And I just can't get over it at times. The love of God for me, 
in spite of what I've done and who I am. Huh? God's love reaches. God's love. And you know, the thing is, God didn't go for us when we nice and we cleaned up, you know. He goes of us, goes after us, even when our lives are messed up, huh? wrapped up in all kinds of stuff. And this is why so many times people say, you know, they want to get clean before they come into church. And they say, give me a chance, amen. Get it all together, then I'll come. And God says, I love you just the way you are. You come unto me. I will make you. You don't, you don't worry. I love you. Because he sees beyond what others see. Others see our brokenness. They see our weaknesses. They see our insufficiency. But God, he sees it all. You just call on him. Every time I sing that, I, I, I just focus on the love of God. Unending, you can call on him in any situation. And he's there. He's there. He's there. Wow, what a father. What a father. What a father. You know, when I was young, I had a, a whole big tin of marbles, guess. You saw pitch marbles, win, but I couldn't take bokey. And you know, anytime I go and I play three rings or something and I lose and we have to take bokey, I used to say, hold on, hold on. Call my sister. And she was the bokey taker. So anytime... We lose. She says, hey, my sister taking it for me. <laughs> and she taking all the bokey. And you know, that's how God is. We can call on him in our time of distress, our times of trouble. And God is right there. He go take the bokey for you. <laughs> I don't know if young people know what that is. <laughs> but that's the God we serve. Sister Valerie, you know where's a bokey? Uh uh. Uh uh. You was a wrong. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. You take any bokey for Alice? Eh? For yourself? Well, thank God I had a, a bokey taker. <laughs> Our theme today is, brethren, be steadfast. And that's not our theme for today only, but it's the theme for the year 2021. Turn with me in your Bibles. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse, and when you get home, you're going to read the portion. It's First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 58. We will spend some time on uh, that portion. Wow, praise God. Father, we just thank you today for your word. We thank you for your love. Wow, it's, it's, just, it's just constant. You never, never leave us alone. As we open your word today, Holy Spirit, give light. Minister to hearts. Convict us. Oh God, speak into our spirits that we may understand your word and your word will bear good fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I trust you have your notepads and your pens and your tabs or your whatever you have so you are taking your notes with us as we go through hearing from God for this period. This portion of scripture uh, that we outlined starts off in verse 51 and it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And a number of you would know that portion of scripture. We read it many times during funerals and wakes. 
and it talks about what is happening there. Our key verse that we're focusing on is verse 58. And verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. And so the scripture says that we ought to be steadfast. And our theme for this year is, brethren, be steadfast. The word steadfast, you would see there, uh, has a number of meanings. But the sense of what it is, the, the root word for it is stead. And that word literally means to be fixed. To be fixed. As in fixed in a place. And so when we say steadfast, it means to be firm in one place. Fixed in direction. Steadily directed. Focused. Firm in purpose. Firm in purpose. Resolute. Unwavering. Unwavering. The form of that is where we talk about steady. You know, be steady. It means you're not shifty. You're unwavering. You're steady. You're steadfast. Firm. Firmly established or fixed in a position. That is to be steadfast. Unwavering. I want to say to us today that God has called us to steadfastness. Not only in the general word, but over the last while I've been praying and seeking God for a theme for this year. While we have a vision as a church, and our vision is what we hope to become in the long term. So it projects where we see ourselves down there. But along that path, each year, God has a definite word for us that he wants us to focus on. Something that he wants us to do this year on our way towards that final vision achievement. And this year, God has given the word steadfast. It is the word that God has said for us as a church that we need to focus on for the next while. Brethren, be steadfast. And so you will hear of that, not only starting today, but this will be hammered out throughout the year. It will come back, made sink deep into our spirits, what God is saying to us today. And God gives a word to his church for a purpose. It's not by chance. This word is relevant, it's real, and it's timely. And it is what God is saying. The scripture that we just read talks about this, but before it gets to that, it starts off in verse 58 by saying, therefore. Therefore. The therefore precedes the stuff before. The stuff that we talk about in, in funerals. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? That death has no power over us. And the scripture in saying all that, then it says, therefore. And so what the scripture is saying is, consequently or because of what has gone before. You need to be steadfast. And therefore, the scripture is saying very clearly, the idea of the power over death, that we all rejoice and say, we have the power over death and victory is swamped up. God is saying, if you want to achieve that, therefore, as a result of, you must be steadfast. Your steadfastness depends on your ability to achieve victory. If you're not steadfast, the Bible says, you will not partake in this. It's good to start. It's better 
to continue. It's best to finish. You've got to stay in the race. You can't claim the power of death and victory if you don't remain steadfast. You lose out along the way. And so 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says to us, Brethren, beloved brethren, be steadfast. Always, always abounding in the work of the Lord. God is saying to his people that steadfastness is key. And we ought to be steadfast, unwavering. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, he tells us that we are to what? Stand fast in the liberty that Christ has set us free. Again, he is treating us as his people to be steadfast, unmoving. The book of Job, we know what has happened to Job. And the enemy is ripping him apart. All kinds of stuff is happening. But brother Job remains firm. He remains resolute that he will not change. Job chapter 11 and verse 14, the scripture says, If iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and will not fail. We need to be steadfast. There is a call in scripture for God's people to be steadfast. To hold fast to what God is saying to us. Any area in life, there is a need for steadfastness. It is not only a criteria that the Bible speaks of that we must have as Christians, but if we are to achieve anything in life, you need to be steadfast. How many times we start off in, in, in education. I remember starting off and when you go to do your, your first degree, they tell you three years, they say, Lord, I go be old and gray before I finish. Because that three years seems so long and far that it, you can't achieve it. Mm -mm. And you remain steadfast and firm and you continue on. That's huh, the color. And then before you know it, you say, wait, hey, graduation. So much so that by the time you graduate now, you're looking around, what else to do? Hmm? Val, you thought you're done with your first degree. Well, thank God I'm done with that. I wash my hand. And suddenly the three years is over and you're now saying, well, hmm, better go on. And they start to talk about masters now. And you never thought you would reach there. But because you finished the first, you say, well, <clears throat> steadfastness. If we are to achieve anything in life, we are going to be steadfast. You can't start a business and the first wimp of trouble you give up, then you're going to bust. In a relationship, the person you are with, if that relationship is going to blossom, then it will take steadfastness. Unwavering commitment to that person, to a career. If you're going to do anything in life, in any profession, there are going to be tough times. Things are going to be hard. But you've got to hold on and persevere. Because steadfastness is needed in every sphere of our life without it we will not achieve anything we will be good starters but unable to complete in the role of life many who have struggled and there are many who have succeeded but success it's for those who have not gotten discouraged and given up. Because this, you can get discouraged at times. The Bible talks about that. He says discouragement will come. And David said what? He had to encourage himself. So it will come. But those who hold on in the face of that discouragement and don't give up, 
they, they receive the reward of steadfastness, which is the victories that God has promised to us. The Bible is replete with examples of this steadfastness, of persons who have been steadfast in serving the Lord. We read about in the book of Acts with Paul, and Paul speaks firmly of his steadfastness in Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. Paul says, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord to testify of the gospel, I persevere. So Paul is saying, I remain steadfast. Whatever comes my way, I am persevering. I count my life as nothing because I want to win the prize. He remains steadfast in God. The Bible tells us in 1 Kings chapter 13 about a man of God. And it's instructive that in the scripture, the Bible talks about this, this man of God. And in verse 13, uh, in chapter 13 verse 1, it says, And behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel. And throughout the scripture you research, it doesn't say who this man of God is. He has no name. It doesn't say what his name is. But I think it is instructive that God did that, not to cloud us with the name, but he's trying to say this was a man of God. And we can all fit ourselves into that. Because this man of God... A man who believed in God and trusted in God and he heard from God. He served God diligently and God told him what to do. When everyone was sinning, he was firm. And God gave him a word and told him what he needed to do. And God spoke to him. He went to the king and he says to the king, God is going to split your kingdom. And your kingdom that you have will be split in two. And the king was so upset, the scripture says, that the king put out his hand to tell his people, arrest him and take him. And as the king put out his hand, his hand shriveled up. And he became lame. And the king was so discouraged, the king turned to him, this man of God, and said, please forgive me. Now God had said to the man of God that he was not for that period to, to eat anything and he was not to uh, take in any food. He was only to have water and he was not to eat anything. And he was to pray and fast and seek the Lord. The king after being saved and his, the, the man of God prayed for him, his hand was restored. And so the king was so joyous with what had happened to him. The king sent word. And this is what the king said. I thank you for the favor that God has given. And your prayer has restored me. So the king entreated him. Come with me and refresh yourself. And I will give you a reward. God says to the man of God, you don't go and eat and drink and do all this stuff. I've called you now for a purpose. The king being so touched... The king says to him, come, come boy, you, I want to give you all these stuff and refresh you. But in verse 8, the man of God was steadfast. And he says in verse 8, he says to the king, if you were to give me half of your house, I would not go with you. Nor would I eat bread nor drink water in your place. For the Lord God has commanded me saying, you shall not eat bread nor drink or return the way you came. So the man of God is saying, God has spoken to me. And regardless of what you offer me, king, I am not going to give in. I am going to be steadfast in following what God says. 
And, and sometimes in our own life, there are kings that come in our life. Kings that want to control these controllers. And they encourage you to do things that you know God is telling you not to do. God has said to you, there are certain things in your life he has revealed, things in his word that you know God says you should not get involved in. And these power brokers, these people who pulling strings, your strings, they come and they say to you, come and do this. And the man of God was steadfast. He said, no, I will not give in. And the call to us today is when these kings come in your life and they start to say to you things that are against God, you need to be steadfast and hold on. The thing about this is this man of God resisted the king and he was steadfast. But he went on, the scripture says later on, after this had happened, a prophet of God came to him. And it's one thing to resist all these kings for doing that. It's hard because a king is a controller. But now, who comes? A prophet, your fellow brethren, come among you, your partner, who you know from long. It's one thing to resist the, the hefes, but now the guy from right there comes. And the prophet encourages him and says to him, Come, let us go back and eat bread and drink water for we will celebrate the Lord together. And the man of God says, no, God said to me, don't do that. Stay away. And, and look at verse 18. For all of us, we need to be key because in verse 18, the Bible says, this is what the prophet said to the man of God. Your brethren, he says, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel, you hear this? And an angel spoke to me, Sister Val. <laughs> you see how it comes? God already spoke to the man of God and tell him what to do. Eh? You heard from God. You sit up right here in church and God spoke to you and tell you what to do. And then you go out the door and he says, I too am a prophet, so I am like you. And he adds to it. He said, an angel came and spoke to me. <laughs> and the angel said, hear what the angel says, bring him back with you to your house that you may eat bread and drink water. And the scripture says, he was lying to him, a lying spirit. Hmm. Tallulah, Christians is lie. They're not supposed to. But some of them, they lie, lie, lie. And so you need to test the word of God. What is God's word saying? Anybody, the Bible says, is a liar who comes against what God's word says. Huh? It started way back in the garden. God told them, don't eat any devil. You think God really said that? He didn't mean it that way. And they start to give you all kinds of compromises. You know God's word said you must not be unequally yoked. God said it in his word. But he fell out looking nice, nice, nice. And he's saying the right words. And he's even willing to come to church with you. And he said you could come anytime. He will even drop you to church. He said that had to be from God. And you know what God's word says. Yes? Not a king, but your fellow brethren. And you're now giving in. You know God's word says the importance of paying your tithes. Yes? But then you say, and I have bills. And people say, you better, you go and feed them people in the church and they thief in your money. You better look after yourself. Eh? Huh? The prophets that come alongside and they're saying things that's sounding good. And you know this man of God who resisted the king went and listened to this other prophet and he said, okay, use our prophet since you say so. And he went with him. 
to cut it short, this man of God, after he had done that, scripture says down the road, he was ripped apart and eaten by lions and his body scattered. There's destruction when we fail to listen to God's word, when we're not steadfast. If we do not hold firm to what God says. God is calling us people this year to be steadfast. He is saying to us that we must be unmoved by what happens around us. The Bible talks about Josiah. Josiah, who the Bible says became king at age eight. And it's important for us because sometimes we, we leave our children and let them do what they want. They're small. They're small. And you see sometimes, Lady Lee, the child in front there, I'm cussing anybody laughing. <laughs> Where she learned that word from? <laughs> she cute, eh? And look at she whining, whining, whining. Whine for me, whine for me. And we feel it's no big thing. Yes? And we leave the children to do what they want. But the Bible says this young man was steadfast. His parents taught him the word of God. And at age eight, eight, he submitted to the Lord. Chelsea, how old are you? Six. Well, you're in time. He was eight years. And at eight years, he became king. And you would think at that age, everybody could rule you and do, tell you what you want. But this young man, the Bible says, was steadfast. And the words that he learned from his parents, he followed. The Bible, look at it. The Bible says, Josiah wholly followed the Lord. I love that. Not halfway. He said he wholly followed the Lord. He was known as one of the greatest kings who served God. After his time, kings of Israel started going up. But this young man purposed in his heart, steadfast, I will serve God. And God is calling us this year to be steadfast. He's saying to us that we need to be firm. And this year, come what may, we don't know what the year holds. But the word of the Lord has come forth. That God is saying his people need to be steadfast. I don't know what's coming your way. I don't know what mountains are in your way. What valleys, what kings are going to come. Who is going to bring what? But to each one of you in this house today, God is saying... You need to be steadfast and hold firm regardless of what happens. God is saying you must be unwavering. Whether it is a king or brethren or good friend or partner who you know from long time, what does God's word say? And that must be our commitment this year. To see God's vision for my life fulfilled, God is saying we need to be steadfast. Unmoving. Let's all stand. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13 says, I exhort you daily, lest you be hardened, through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are partakers of Christ. And we are partakers of Christ only if we hold from the beginning the confidence we have in him steadfast unto the end. It's good to start. It's good to be here. It's good to pray. But you will only do it if you remain steadfast. When the waves of life come rushing against you, when the trials of life, the day-to-day -day living, when life itself comes at you, you need to say, God, I'm committing myself to be steadfast. 
I say today and I exhort everyone in this house to take hold of the word of God. Let that be your guide this year. Do not flinch to the left or to the right. Whatever come your way, hold on to Jesus. Your sure foundation. Don't allow the trials of life to move you. Want to pray today for all of us. That God will minister to us. Would you lift your hands all over this house? Everyone, children, lift your hands. Come on. We just heard you're not too young. You're in church. Lift your hands. And we're going to pray. Everyone inside of this house. We are not about joking. We are making a commitment this year to God. In this house, this first Sunday of this year, God as my witness. Seal this. I'm going to be steadfast. Elohim, El Elyon, our Father, I thank you today for each person standing here in this house. I thank you, God. For their willingness to come into your sanctuary today. I thank you God for your great love for all of us. The love and the blessings you've bestowed on us. I thank you God for preserving our lives. And seeing us through 2020. I thank you God for taking us over. And for our safe arrival into 2021. Thank you God for taking us and bringing us to this point. God, we thank you for your favor. For your favor has no end. Your love, your love is everlasting. It's overwhelming. It never leaves us. And we thank you, God, from generation to generation, your love goes on. Dear God, we thank you and we ask you to forgive us. Because sometimes in our weaknesses, we forget that you are in charge. And God, we allow the concerns of our life to overwhelm us. But Father, we pray today that you will just continue to cover our lives. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. Oh God, protect everything in our hands. Bless our lives. May your goodness and your mercy run over us, ahead of us. Overshadow us that whatever comes our way in 2021, oh God, we pray that we will stand firm with you. I pray today for everyone standing here that God, you will open the doors of blessing in their lives. Blessing upon them and their children and their children, children. That they will be blessed. And God, you will close every door that is wrong. Every door that will lead them in the wrong path. The things that are not for them. Close those doors. Remove from them, God, and give them the strength to know your will. Let your vision for their life become real. Let them not float around and flounder and put their feet. But God, reveal yourself. And give them the strength to remain God steadfast. Oh God, deliver them from every evil work. Establish the work of their hands. And whatever they put their hands to do, God, we declare blessings. And when trials come, when difficulties come, when things don't go the way they plan, God, help them to remain steadfast and to trust in you unwavering. Let them serve you with gladness and let them follow you. In Jesus' name, I want you to say, Lord, today I pledge myself to be steadfast. Lord, today, 
I pledge myself to be steadfast. Help me God. Help me God to remain steadfast. Hold on to your word. Follow you and never go astray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to our Sunday morning service. We hope that you have been blessed by our worship and our word today. Thank you for all the likes, the hearts, and the comments. We feel your love even though you aren't here with us physically. God's blessing be with you and your family this coming week, and we invite you again to join us in person this coming Sunday. Jesus Eye Center is constantly growing, and our ministries are doing great things for the kingdom. If you are looking for a way to get involved, email us at jesuslifecenter1 at gmail.com or WhatsApp us at 714-0527. For more information about our church and our ministries, go to jesuslifecenter.com. Up next will be our weekly announcements and information on how you can support each other. Be strong, and I say to be of good courage, cause we represent in Christ's likeness and image. Once God be for us, then throw the enemy like garbage. This battle is not ours, but it's the Lord's. Remember David, he was a little youth man. When he heard Goliath come to cause a war upon the land, he said, So let me go down to fight that jokey man. We see to defy the children of the Almighty One. So David grabbed him, stopped him, sling some stone, and went in courage. When Goliath see the man, he cursed and talked his garbage. He said, You think I am a dog? Come to me with sticks and stone. But he did not know he was not fighting David alone. Be strong, be hey. strong. And I said to be of good courage. Like he was gone, and 